We are doing this online tutorial for the projects with CDIO elements in pedagogy for the profession. So thinking is one of the skills that we would like to develop in our students. So how, what is thinking? Right, now that's a really big one, Katrina, because if you read in the literature, there's thousands of books written on thinking and um, to actually define it is difficult because it's an internal mental process. What? psychologists call cognition. So essentially from a teaching point of view there's probably three terms that are most important that's critical thinking, creative thinking and metacognitive thinking and these are the types of thinking that our faculty will need to understand quite clearly. Where would you like me to start? Well we could start perhaps telling more about um, how do we go about using these skills in project-based learning? Right, okay. So the first thing is we've got to define these three types of thinking. Now critical thinking um, essentially is about analysing a situation. So in an engineering uh, context we might want to analyse a site for development, we want to look at developing some machine system so we analyse the different parts we're going to bring into it. It's also about sometimes comparing and contrasting things. So if you went into, you're in chemical engineering, let's suppose something goes wrong. You, if the engineer comes in, what the engineer will do, will want to analyse what's going wrong. But the first thing he or she is likely to do is say, have I seen this before? So they would compare and contrast it. Mm -hmm. So essentially what thinking is doing is making connections in the mind. It's an internal process. And what we're doing essentially is taking information, comparing it with what we've already got in our long-term memory system. That's why experts don't have to think too much, because they've probably seen the problem before. So let's go back to critical thinking. So it involves analysis, comparing, contrast. And what you're doing is you're making these connections with your prior knowledge in long-term memory, and you're trying to build up an accurate representation, a picture of reality. It's like doing a jigsaw puzzle. It's putting all those pieces together. What thinking does, it takes all those bits of information and it, it creates this mental picture. And that's often referred to as inference and interpretation. Once you think you understand it, then you can act on the problem. Now, there's another type of thinking. Once you've kind of understood the problem, you might have to deal with it. And what you have to then do is to evaluate different options. And it's a bit like going shopping. Like you go shopping and you want to buy a new phone and you say, right, you, you look at the project, uh, the, um, the various phones, you analyse them, you compare and contrast, you get an idea. And then you've got to decide which one to buy or which industrial or you know, solution to adopt. And that's where evaluation comes in. So you basically have a set of criteria that you think are the most important. You prioritise those. You apply them to the options and you make a decision. So critical thinking is really those types of thinking activities. And a lot of engineering and a lot of everyday good thinking is simply good critical thinking. Mm. Now there's two other types of thinking, is there? Yes, there Can you is. remember what they were? Um, critical thinking it's and yeah, metacognitive just, thinking. Right, and what's the other one? It's very uh, popular today. Creative thinking. Yeah, okay. So critical thinking is trying to get the big picture of what we're looking at. Now, creative thinking is a very easy concept. We try to use our mind and come up with something that's novel and useful. People often say thinking out of the box, but that's nonsense. You can't think outside the box. All you can do is connect different bits of information, neural networks in your brain to have a new perception. More you've got in there, more you try to break up existing patterns of information processing. Mm -hmm. As de Bono says, you've got to provoke your existing thinking to create new connections, to create new perceptions. Very easy to understand, but terribly difficult to actually do well. Because you typically need to be pretty much an expert and you need to work very hard at forcing these connections to, to change their neural pathways, to come up with a new idea. Um, so that's a very challenging type of thinking, but we want to encourage our students to at least start to use their minds mm. in um, a way to understand how it works. Now there's one more. Oh yes, one more. Waiting to hear more. Which one? 
metacognitive thinking. Right. Now, this is the one that spooks people because it's got that kind of eifalute arm metacognitive thinking. The, the mind shuts down. Because one thing we know about thinking is that it's very good for learning, but the brain is inherently lazy. Um, the uh, famous cognitive neuroscientist Daniel Willingham wrote a book uh, called Why Students Don't Like School. Yes. And the reason the is we make students think about things that they might not be interested in. Mm. It's actually tiring. That's why it's nice to have it all nicely in your long-term memory, because it won't create that cognitive strain. You can just look at the situation and say, ah, yes, I saw this before. Definitely we do that, as opposed to having to do all this hard mental activity that's tiring. Mm. Anyway, metacognitive thinking. Now, mm. As far as we know, only humans have this capability and it's the ability to actually reflect on and evaluate our own thinking process. So as I'm sitting here talking to you now, I'm metacognitive about I'm talking to you, I'm talking about thinking, the cameras are on and I've got to manage myself. So metacognition is really about self-management, self-regulation.